Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video review. Today we are going to look at the ALM BC circuits, specifically the ALM 010 OAX2. What about the general idea of giving products catchy, easy to remember names? Uh, well, not so much this time. But anyway, this is a dual channel attenuator with uh, a few extra features, including the option to set this to work as a two channels mixer. We will look at all these features during the course of this review, of course. The ALM010 is a multifunctional module that could take care, potentially, I say potentially because, of course, we are going to review it and test it now. Uh, so it could take care of a number of user cases, and it proposes to do that in only four HPs, which is a quite, you know, quite a friendly size. It's also not that deep. Depth is only 32 millimeters, so that makes it skiff friendly. More about the technical details and data for this module later on in the video. We have uh, two identical signal controlling channels. For each channel, we have an input for your input signal, the offset to add subtract plus minus 10 volts to the output, the attenuverter to attenuate and control polarity of the incoming signal, the output which combines both the offset and the attenuverted input signal, two LEDs to show polarity and level of the signal present at the output. Bottom channel, exactly the same. If you want to use this as a two channels mixer, there is a jumper at the back of the unit. You put it into the mix position and you will have the output of the first channel normalized into the second channel. So this output will present you both signals, giving you a two channel mixer. Here we have the output of channel 1 going straight into input 1 on the Mordax data, so we can see a reading of the voltage signal present at this output. Now, with nothing plugged into the input of the LM010, the attenuverter is doing nothing because the attenuverter only operates on an input signal. This does not do anything directly to the output. This attenuates and inverts a signal present at the input. The DC offset instead delivers voltage at the output and the range of this voltage goes from uh, positive 10, well, from 0 to 10, and all the way down from 0 to minus 10. So we have a minus 10 all the way up to plus 10 offset. We can add subtract from whatever we have at the output. And let's go back to 0. Well, we can actually have some voltage here, it doesn't matter what the value is, let's say, yeah, whatever it is, you know, 349. Just to demonstrate that if I change this, attenuating is not attenuating the output, you know, otherwise uh, you would see the voltage going down and then fully counterclockwise, you would, you would see it going negative. This has no effect on the output, only works on the input signal. There was the DC offset, which is the first function you can get out of this module. The second and third function is attenuation and inversion, which comes courtesy of knob 2. Right, I'm going to use some voltage, right now it's set to zero, from the levitate and send it to the input. Okay. And we have zero volt because I'm not sending anything. All right, now let's send some voltage and you see whatever we send in goes to the output because the attenuation it's fully open it's not attenuating or inverting anything 
and the DC offset is set to zero. So at the output, we have what we have at the input. Now let's, uh, I don't know, lower this to one volt. And let's start attenuating the signal. This is attenuating whatever we have at the input. And it goes from, in this case, one volt to zero. Right? That's the attenuation. As I keep turning counterclockwise, I go into negative until the signal is fully inverted. Now we were sending one volt. We are not getting minus one, we're getting minus 0 0.96. So there is four cents, four centivolts missing. <laughs> but anyway, it's the signal is inverted. Let's try, okay, fully open again. So we have the input going through. Let's try with uh, four volts. And attenuate and invert the signal. And we get to 384. Not a full minus four inversion, but 384, close enough, I guess. Of course, these two knobs can work together. You can use the offset to add vol or subtract voltage. Now let's have a look at an interesting additional boost we can get out of the ALM when dealing with alternate signals. So it's LFO, ALM for processing, out of the LM into the quantizer to quantize notes and the quantize notes into the VCO. Now, I'm taking a copy of the original LFO. You see, this is the LFO that goes here and it's molted to channel one on the data. I'm also taking a copy of the output of the LM so we can compare the top green signal, which is the original LFO signal, against the bottom blue signal, which is the output of the ALM, so after processing. Now, the top and bottom signal are the same because I have no offset applied and I have no attenuation applied. Now, you see, I have a positive boost if I want it. If I push, if I rotate clockwise, I can actually reach higher nodes and boost in other words, boost the alternate signal. So this allows me to have a manual control over the LFO that is generating our notes. You know, this could have been a random quantized signal generating more interesting melodies. And you can momentarily reach a wider range because, of course, you know, you are increasing the, uh, the total amplitude of the signal. And going counterclockwise, this time I can reach a full inversion. With the DC signal, we were a few cents short of full inversion. With an alternate signal, not only we can reach a full inversion, so we have an opposite phase signal with the same amplitude, Opposite, opposite phase, and we can boost it further counterclockwise and reach those higher notes or lower notes with uh, an increased amplitude. So that's, that's very useful because um, not only you can attenuate and full invert an alternate signal, but you can add some boost and you can make good use of it to manually change whatever, I mean, whatever the signal is doing for you, if it's generating notes or if it's affecting the frequency of a filter, an effect, a parameter on, on any DSP effect. It's nice to have the extra control, apart from the fact that you may need the boost for, you know, any other reason, any other use you can come up with. So that's, that's a very welcome feature. Excellent. Of course, you can use these two together, inverting it and then changing the offset. It depends how much voltage you need at the output. But there is something to keep in mind. This output is capped at plus minus 10 volts, 10.05, something like that. Now let's try with a, a negative uh, 
value this is on uh, set to zero let's uh, use uh, this input uh, because i can uh, uh, yeah, invert it so we get negative voltage coming into the AL alm at uh, zero ten this goes now from zero to minus nine volts and indeed there we go we have a minus nine now if i add minus again it stops it caps at around minus 10 volts so the range of voltage you get at the output it's minus 10 plus 10 maximum now let's have a look at a possible use of uh, one of the channels of the alm using the attenuation and the dc offset on their own or, or together okay let's say you have an lfo going into a quantizer the output of the quantizer going into a CV input on a, on a module, on a VCO, and the output of the VCO going into a mixer, right? So what you have is the, this is a sine wave, so it's the LFO sending voltage values to the quantizer, and we're sending the outcome of this quantization to a VCO. And of course, we're hearing what the VCO is playing. Now, if you leave it like this, you don't have much control over the source of the musical notes you're hearing. Yes, you could change the LFO itself, but... That means you can only change the frequency of the LFO. Let's say you don't want to change the frequency, you want to have some control over the actual notes that the VCO is going to play. Okay, so what we can do is send the LFO. You shut up for a moment. <laughs> we send the LFO to the quantizer. Uh, sorry, that's what we had before. <laughs> we send the LFO to a mult and a copy of the LFO signal, we send it to the ALM010. And I'm sending a copy of it to channel one on the uh, Mordax data, so we can still have a look at the original LFO. The other copy goes into, into the ALM010. Here we have access to DC offset and attenuation, Right now, the DC offset is set to zero, and the attenuation is not acting on the signal because it's fully open. The output of the ALM010 goes into a mult, and we have a copy going to channel 2 on the data. So channel 1 shows us the original LFO. Channel 2 shows us a copy of the LFO that we're going to modify thanks to the ALM010. A copy of the output of the ALM is sent to the quantizer. So, previously, we had the LFO into the quantizer, quantizer to VCO, VCO to mixer. Now we have LFO to ALM, ALM output after processing, to the quantizer. So we have inserted the ALM010 between the source of voltage and the quantizer. The output of the quantizer goes to the VCO as it was going before. So now, if I plug the output of the VCO back into the mix, we should hear the same thing we had before because the ALM010 is not doing anything yet. Hey, that's what we have. Now, what is the advantage of having something like this? Then now, I could use the attenuation to change the size, the span of voltage of that LFO. So if I start to attenuate it, and if you look at the waveforms, so the green one at the top is the original, and the one at the bottom, I'm going to attenuate it.
you hear it now, the sound is changing because I don't have those high pitch notes anymore. Because the sine wave, the voltage, is not going up to 5 volts anymore. I'm attenuating to only go to around 2 3 volts. 2 volts. A little bit higher, a little bit lower. And you could go close to zero. So it only changes a couple of notes. See? So I'm attenuating the signal. I'm limiting the range of that voltage span so that the quantizer only receives some of the voltage, so there are less, there is a smaller range of notes hitting the VCO in the end. I can push it back up while they play, so I can control it. I can go a little bit negative. Of course, when you start to go negative, and if you go fully negative, uh, all you're doing is inverting the phase of the LFO, of the signal. You see, the phase is inverted, but of course the range of voltage is the same, it, you know, it's a negative copy of it, so you still have the full range of notes as before. But the phase inversion is useful for other things, you know, if it, it depends on what you're doing uh, at the end of it. So let's go back to no attenuation, that's again the original signal, and let's play around with the DC offset. Now with the DC offset, if we go positive, we will be adding offset to the, to the, to the uh, LFO, to the sine wave, so we're pushing it positive. So you have a... No. See, it doesn't go to low voltage as before, so you don't have those low notes anymore. You have mainly high notes because there is a positive offset all the other way around. Which is similar to the original, anyway, but you get the point. So if you add a positive offset, you shift the range to, uh, to high voltage, so you have mainly uh, high pitch notes, or vice versa. So let's put this, of course, towards zero, roughly, uh, and you are back to the uh, original LFO. So you can interact with uh, the signal going into quantizer, then B, uh, BCO, so you can change the range of notes live while you're performing something, so you can add the variation. Um, and this is just, you know, one case. Of course, you have, you know, another one. For example, you could um, have another LFO controlling the uh, cutoff frequency of the sound, and you can change the span of the frequency by attenuating it, adding offset, and this way you have control on the range of notes played and the cutoff frequency on the actual sound. But there is, you know, so again, as I usually say, it's all about voltage. You, if you can control manipulate voltage, you gradually will come up with more and more ways to do something with this control you have over what it generates, what happens inside your Eurorack case. <laughs>
to so if with uh, the offset I can tra I can transpose the pitch then at one point it doesn't go any lower because uh, where well, the range of the peak of voice it's uh, I think C1 C8 or something like that one let's uh, send voltage to parameter 2 through the CV input So channel 2 is controlling the amount of LF4 signal being sent to parameter 2. And the first channel controls the transpose, the pitch. And the attenuation of channel 1 controls how much of that random voltage gets to the quantizer. The front panel layout, it's very functional. I like that they went for 4 HP. I don't know if they had the option to go for 3 HPs, maybe lining this up vertically. But probably we would have ended up with uh, um, smaller knobs because the slimmer it is, the closer you are to the knobs of modules they are to the left or to the right. So these uh, 4 HPs, they've been put to good use because they had the good idea of offsetting the knobs to the left, to the right, which creates some space, at, at least to one side of the knob. You see, I can, my finger just fits in there. So instead of having to grab the top of the knob with your fingernails and uh, use it, you can actually touch the side of it just fine and have a good grip on it before rotating it. The same thing with the other one. Then you have two LEDs instead of only one. No, they could have had one LED changing color. Instead, those two LEDs give you a direct, explicit information about being positive or negative values. And they also change in brightness, indicating a, you know, less voltage or more voltage going to the output. So yes, the interface works. It's easy to use. The uh, knobs are uh, not bad at all. They are no, well, they're not wobbly. Oh, a little bit if you force them, but they're fine, they're quite sturdy. And uh, they do have some resistance, so you can have a good control on uh, operating the rotation. I made this uh, darker now because I wanted to show you the LED lights. You can see the LEDs just fine, but it's just that through the camera with the strong camera light, the LED is a little bit harder to see on the screen, but in normal use, you in front of the module, the LEDs are perfectly fine. So we have zero volt, so there is nothing, the LED is not showing anything, there is a zero volt. As I increase voltage, you will see the red LED showing positive value, you see, and the brightness changes depending on how much voltage I'm sending through. So this is the maximum and this is the minimum going to zero. Now let's put some voltage and I use the attenuator 
to lower the voltage, you see the LED is dimming, and then as I go negative, the green LED comes up and becomes stronger the, the more negative voltage we have at the, out, at, the, at the output. So yeah, it's very nice to have two LEDs. The top one shows, which is red, shows positive values, and the one at the bottom shows you negative values and the intensity. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Let's look at the ALM010 now as a two-channel mixer. I have the jumper connected to the rear of the unit, of the module. Keep in mind that everything we've done so far, you know, using this to attenuate signal to control something else, that's still working just fine, is that with the jumper connected, you can also use it as a mixer. So if you leave the jumper on, you can still do everything we've done before. So now I have uh, just some... Uh, some LFO signal going into the Dopfer A1841 and uh, I'm taking the output from here just to generate some voltage to go into the quantizer input. The quantized voltage, I send it to a mult so I can have a copy to send to this VCO and then we send it also to the other VCO anyway. So I have a quantized voltage going into the one volt per octave input of the Pico VCO. The output from this module goes into the input channel, channel one on the ALM010. And just as a normal mixer channel, uh, we can uh, attenuate this signal. This is going into the mixer here, just so we can record it. Now you need to find the zero position here yourself. It's not indented, so uh, you know if you overshoot it, it just goes into the negative signal, so the sound comes back. Okay, so that's a channel working on its own to attenuate audio. Now, let's add the second channel. I take a copy of the quantized voltage and send it to the uh, one volt per octave input of the Pico Voice. And I take the output from the Pico Voice and send it to channel one. Now, okay, as I said, with the jumper in, if you use it this way, channel 1 is normaled into channel 2. So as I plug this in, you will hear the second sound coming in. Now if I attenuate this, you will hear the sound on channel 1 even more. And channel 1 has its own attenuation. If you plug something into the output of channel 1, you break this normal connection. See? Now, channel 1, you cannot hear it anymore. Now you can. Now you can't. And you are free, of course, to use this channel independently. See? The sound is here now. Otherwise, you have two channels going into one. The DC offset, uh, well, it, this is not gonna, this is not going to change the pitch or anything. This is just going to add a voltage signal to the output. You can hear it. Yeah, but oh, and this is in this case, it's not going to change the pitch the way it's all connected right now. Okay, so yes. Uh, Channel 1, normal into channel 2, 2 into 1, mixer. Okay, here we are at the end of this review, and the ALM-010 is out of the case. So, let's have a look at uh, what's inside it, but we're not, gonna, <laughs> we're not going to reverse engineer this thing. Uh, it has a uh, four alpha-branded pots, which is good, nice, stir, nice amount of friction in, in the knobs. There's a couple of uh, T074 in there. The ribbon power cable, it's about 25 centimeters long, and 
this is the jumper we talked about, I was mentioning before. With this out, you do not have the mixing functionality. So the two channels are separate. With this in, remember, channel one is normal into channel two. So you can use it as a mixer if you want to. If you plug something on the, at the output of channel one, the normal connection is, is interrupted. So you can still use it as separate channels. I always have the jumper plugged in because, as I said, if I need to use it as two separate channels, that means I am going to use the output of the top channel. And as soon as you use the output of the top channel, the normal connection is interrupted. When I need to use it as a mixer, I simply don't plug anything here and I have a two-in-one channel mixer. So I don't really see the need to take the jumper out. So I would suggest just leave it in and use it the way you want, just by plugging the cable the way you need to plug the cable in for whichever kind of patch you are working with. So, yes. In conclusion, uh, what do we think about the... Uh, oh, one more thing I want to say, uh, and that is the, the depth for you, of the unit. The manual says 32 millimeters depth. I measure from the front of the panel to the rear of the connector here, I only measure 27 millimeters. So it's definitely, no, I don't think, no, it's definitely no more than 30 millimeters. I didn't use a caliper, but uh, it's definitely uh, skiff friendly. That's what I wanted to say. So what, what, do, we, what do I think about it? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Blue likes it. So that's a good start. They have become good friends and they spend weekends riding around the desk, as we have seen at the beginning of the video. Anyway, beyond that, yes, I, I do like it. It's in, it has been in my case for some time. It makes it into my smaller case. Whenever I use the smaller 84 HP case, the one you have seen I've used for this review, it makes it in there most times. Because it is 4 HP and in 4 HP, it gives me the option to be used as a two-channel mixer in case I need a couple of extra channel of mixing. But... It does give me two channels, as we have discussed before, of attenuation, inversion, boost, and offset. And indeed, one reason why I particularly, particularly like what the um, ALM-010 offers is that, well, you see, most other 4, 5, 6 HP modules that have attenuation and inversion and DC offset, or a multi-channel, like an 8-channel, mixers and so on. Yes, they do give you offset, but you only get one knob per channel and you only get the DC offset if there is nothing plugged at the input. This is with the other modules. The ALM-010 instead always gives you a separate control over the DC offset. It's two separate knobs, one for attenuation, inversion, and a little bit of extra boost with the AC voltage and a separate function of DC offset plus minus 10 volts. So even if I have something plugged in, if I want to add an offset to the output, I can. With some of the other modules, you can't. It's either attenuation inversion or DC offset. Again, there are compromises. This is only two channels. Others may give you three or up to eight channels. So it always depends on what you need. But for me, it does represent a good use of uh, four HPs. It is easy to use. It has a clear indication of positive or negative signal present at the output using two separate LEDs. Never mind the color. I just, I just remember if it's at the top, it's positive. If it's the bottom one that is lighting, it's negative. Well, anyway, the red one is positive and the green one is negative. I can see this module uh, being definitely an option for uh, people with big cases that have some small gap to fill, then, uh, you know, who can say no to a couple of extra channel mixing or a couple of extra attenuators, a couple of offset control, some inversion, or a little bit of boost. So, yeah, it's, it's useful in that case. And in a smaller case, in a small skiff, where maybe you don't even need so many channels of mixing or you don't need a lot of attenuation, then this is definitely a very valid option considering each channel has separate functions. It's very handy to have around. So 
thumbs up for the ALM010. Hopefully, in this video, I've given you enough information uh, so that you know more about it and you can form your own opinion. If you find this video uh, useful, please click on like. I will appreciate it if you can share it. It would help me a lot. And um, definitely subscribe. There are more videos coming. And also, if I find uh, new information on a module I've already reviewed or if there is a change, I have intention to do updating videos and so on. So if you subscribe, you will get alerts, I, I hope, I think, about new videos coming out. So you won't lose, you won't lose any new updates or just new videos or new modules. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, until next time, happy Euro racking. Have fun.